that were around and in the evenings I would help my mother in the kitchen and while we did this we used to tell some stories but village life was very good during the weekends and after the during the holidays we used it to, to join our parents in the fields and help them with the work. We would till the, the soil with them. But the season I enjoyed most was the harvesting season. In my district, we harvest a minute at that time. And each day during the holidays especially, we would go out in the fields at 6 a.m. and come back home at 6 p.m. Spend the whole day in the fields and have a midday meal there. Now in the fields, we would have some local beer brought to us. We would drink it while we are harvesting the millet. We would sing some songs. But in the evenings, we would go home very tired, but very happy after the day's work. We would sit around fires, sing, drink, and enjoy ourselves. I tell you if you are in the West Africa, I mean in that particular tribe, 
before whether you were 32 or you had 10 children but you are not circumcised, we are not considered a man. So much appreciate so nice, but indeed they are not a man. You may be your man, but to them, they don't you are not a man. You are not a man. understand this? This is all stuff. No sense. Very archaic, progressive, backward. Uh, enough of that. My dear, what are you refuting? After all, circumcision has been medically approved. But those men are not doing it. When I go home, I'm very warmly welcomed by my parents. They are so excited to see me and they, they feel that I'm really back to them. And so as the holidays were around, I either go and visit my, my neighbors who are also just as excited to see me, of course, as my parents. And then sometimes when things are really settled, the excitement is over. We go to the fields and pick some coffee with the friends and uh, brothers. And then in the evenings, when all the day's work is done, we take a stroll in the evening, very happily together. And when I go back from here, from the college, I sit down outside and think and think of again to try and define my position. Where do I belong? In the village or in the towns? And I find that I fit in neither. In the town I feel I'm afraid of the surroundings because I don't know them very much. And so in the village, the superstitions in the village, for example, the traditional values, for example, all are alien to me in much the same way as the ways of the town are alien to me. When I go home, my mother wants me to do any piece of job a woman can do. And I think I'm happy about it. She wants me to learn how to peel matoke, how to dig the ground, and how to keep the house clean, though small it may be. And she says she wants me to be an ideal woman, so that when I have a home of my own, I know how to look after it. But the villagers are quite different. Now, whenever I find that my mother and I in the gardens trying to, to dig, they scold her and say, you women have no respect for education. How dare you do that? You see her hands are soft, her yours are very uh, tough. She looks so delicate, so clean. Remember when she went away, she was very dark, now she's so light. And you don't expect her to do that kind of job. It's dirty. She's not meant for that. And you see, when I go home, I really become a social misfit because I'm educated. So I sit down again in the evening and think, and think. The village looks very terrifying, and so does the town. Yet, nevertheless, I find that the village still drags me. It is still more attractive to me. The drumming, the singing, the happy evenings sometimes. I can't help but get dragged back to the village when the drums begin. And I begin slowly to sing and dance the rhythm. And when I find the drum, I get involved in it. 